Hi everyone, my name is Lindsay and I'm the Manager of School Programs at UCR Arts. UCR Arts is the California Museum of Photography and the Culver Center of the Arts. There's so much you can learn about the history of photography through the California Museum of Photography and its collection of old cameras and photographs. So I thought while we're all at home, we could learn about the history of photography together. Today, we're going to learn about the Camera Obscura and you're going to create your own Camera Obscura. Let's get started. The Camera Obscura was the very first version of the cameras we use now. Camera Obscura is Latin and means dark room, and that is exactly what the first Camera Obscura was. The first version of the Camera Obscura was a completely dark room, a tiny hole in one wall. All the light from outside could only go through that tiny hole. The light would project a picture of the outside world on a white wall across from the hole. The picture or image would look exactly like what's outside, except it was flipped upside down and backwards. Why did the image look like this? Light travels in a straight line, which means when it can only go through a small opening and is coming from different angles, it has to keep traveling straight and project on the surface right in front of it. This causes the image to appear upside down and backwards. Several different people discovered the camera obscura in different places and at different times. The first record of someone discovering a camera obscura was a philosopher named Mo Ti in China in the 5th century BC. He noticed that when light passed through a pinhole in a dark room, it made an inverted but exact image of an object outside the room. In 4th century BC, a philosopher in Greece named Aristotle was outside during a solar eclipse and discovered that underneath a tree, he could see several crescent-shaped images of the sun projected on the ground. This was because the space between the leaves were acting as pinholes, and the dark space under the tree acted as a dark room. This is a much safer way to view a solar eclipse, because if you look at the sun, it can hurt your eyes. Lots of scientists, artists, inventors, geographers, and more used this camera obscura if they wanted to trace an image to draw and paint realistic pictures. You may be wondering, how did the camera obscura turn into a camera like the ones we use today? Later, inventors and scientists figured out how to capture the image in the camera obscura and turn it into a photograph. The first permanent images that came from the camera obscura were actually created around the same time, but two different ways and by two different people. William Henry Fox Talbot captured an image on paper using chemicals. Louis Daguerre captured an image on metal using chemicals called the daguerreotype. They use chemicals that we now know are dangerous, and thankfully, photographers have safer ways to take photographs. You can see a camera obscura room when you visit the California Museum of Photography at UCR Arts. It's built into the building on the third floor. Until then, you can create your own smaller camera obscura at home, called a pinhole camera. Check out the next video to learn how to make your own.